All right. Hello, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And now that I've watched the trailer about a couple thousand times, it's time to do a little shot by shot breakdown analysis of the new Avengers Endgame trailer. Avengers, the end of contracts. I haven't done one of these in a while, but you know, it just feels like the, this is the time, you know? I can't stop watching it, so I might as well make my time useful. But uh, it's gonna be a pretty chill time. Got my coffee ready, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I know a lot of you were a little bit underwhelmed with this trailer. It wasn't really what you were expecting, it wasn't really what you were hoping for. And I get that, you know, I think that's fair. But personally, I feel like this trailer is everything that I wanted it to be, everything that it needed to be, because by this point in time, we know everything. We know the characters. It's been 10 years. Marvel has earned this. They've earned this ensemble and this ability to just convey emotion through these characters and that be enough. So for me, I feel like a good trailer is a trailer that tells you what the movie's about, conveys the proper tone, and doesn't give away too much. And I feel like that's what this trailer does for me. It gives us a couple things that are exciting and I'm gonna talk about those in this video, but I don't really want any more than this. Like if this is all we get, I am completely fine with that. There's nothing else that I need. I know that it's gonna be intense. It's gonna be an emotional roller coaster. And I think this trailer was just perfect. Beautiful, beautiful trailer. But let's just jump right into this shot by shot breakdown of this trailer. So the way that this starts just like immediately made me feel so many things. <laughs> just the feels in this trailer, just, ah, what a whirlwind of emotions. I love this whole opening with Tony, this first shot of his helmet just sitting there in this dimly lit spaceship. I'm assuming they're on the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. It's just a little bit broken, not really running, so it's all like dark and blue and moody. Perfect for a little Tony Stark monologue here that just rips my heart out. I love that Tony's the one that gets to start off this trailer and have this little beautiful moment just isolated, alone. I, I think Nebula is on this ship, but she's, you know, taking a step back, giving him some space to talk to Pepper. I love this image, this like very Hamlet looking monologue where he's just like talking to his helmet, talking to Pepper, just pouring out. Nothing's left. He's like really in his end game. I originally wasn't like super pumped about that title, but I mean, it does, it, it, it works, you know? It makes a lot of sense that that would be the title. Hey, Miss Potts. As soon as he says, hey, Miss Potts, I just, oh, it just hurts me. And it's sad because like, A, he doesn't even know if she is still alive, but he's like, has this hope that she is. So he's sending her all these messages and that alone is just like beautiful and heartbreaking. But also just to know that she's really the only person that he has that he can talk to. Like, she's his closest friend, his closest human interaction. Like, he doesn't really have any friends. He just has, like, acquaintances. Like, Cap was his friend, but, you know, that kind of blew up in his face. This shot is absolutely beautiful. I love this just, like, drifting through space alone. So beautiful. And then he says, part of the journey is the end. <sighs> it's like he's talking to us. He's like, hey, audience. Hey, Marvel fans, listen, part of the journey is the end. This is the end. We're in the end game. It's all over and it's just, ah! I get emotional every time I watch this, every time. Okay. Tony just looks absolutely distraught, just broken and empty and destroyed in this shot, in this scene. And I really feel like we're gonna get one of the best performances from Robert Downey Jr. than we've ever seen. And like already he's like completely blown me away, but I feel like this movie is going to be the one where he like really just hits it home. And I'm very excited about that. And I feel like that's kind of what this scene is too. It's like kind of him showing off a little bit, but I am here for it. I'm here for the Robert Downey Jr. content. Give it to me. I like this shot too, where it's just like a little bit zoomed out, him in the ship looking out into the abyss, basically just like waiting to die. And I like that the only light that we really get in this shot is from his arc reactor. And it's like, you know, he's, he's still there. He's still alive. He's still got some light. I feel like that's a really beautiful visual. When I drift off, I will dream when about I you. When I drift off, I will dream about you. 
<gasps> oh, Tony. And then he says, it's always you. Just rip my heart out, why don't you? Ugh. Honestly, if this scene was the whole trailer, it would have been enough for me. Like, I'm, I'm broken and dead inside. <sighs> I love this shot of, like, the Marvel logo, like, withering away into dust. Like, such a great visual. Way to just, like, go for it, Marvel, you know? And the music kicks in, and it's so intense. It's like every movie, the music just gets a little bit more intense. And I'm always like, how can they top this? Like, Infinity War was nuts. And this is just like, <gasps> I am here for it. Yes, I love this so much. Then we get a little bit of Farmer Thanos. Very excited about Farmer Thanos. He's hung up his armor on a scarecrow for some reason. There it is. Not really sure why he did that. Like, he already had a scarecrow. At the end of Infinity War, you see him walking around his farm and he has a scarecrow. I don't know. Is this supposed to have some sort of meaning or is it just so we can get this weird visual of Thanos on a farm with a scarecrow of himself? I don't know. He does seem like the kind of person that would do that though, so. And then we see him walking through the grass on his farm. It looks like his gauntlet is like, he's wearing it, but it's kind of like all sorts of messed up and it looks like it's almost like melted into his hand. Like it's just a part of him now. But like his fingers are hanging out. I don't know. He's definitely wearing it though, right? It's just all sort of melted and singed. I'm really excited to see more Thanos and I don't know if we'll get any more of him in upcoming trailers, but I'm really excited to have him back because he is truly one of the best Marvel characters ever. Okay, now we're at the Avengers base looking pretty normal, pretty empty. This shot of Steve Rogers crying like it just because he's always the one to just be like stoic and he's the hero and he's like no matter what we're gonna get through this and we're gonna do this and he's just broken he just is crying like Steve Rogers Captain America crying is an image that I will never get out of my brain it's just so sad and it just like at the end of Infinity War when he realized that, that it happened and that Thanos snapped and it, it was happening and he just like collapsed to the ground. That moment was very difficult for me. They're just doing it again. It's just rubbing it in my face. Here it is. Oh. Also really sad that he has shaved off the beard. I was really into that scruffy looking nerf herder Steve Rogers that was mm, doing things for me in my loins. Add fondue, some of that. Also his hair, can we just talk about his hair? Like, what is this perfect poof? He just looks perfect. Like he's crying and he's broken and he still looks goddamn perfect. If that's not just the perfect image of Steve Rogers, then I don't know what is. Just crying his guts out still looks fucking beautiful, but I miss the scruffiness, you know? I, I miss the beard. I like that Black Widow and Cap are like bonding a lot in this movie, it seems. I've always loved their little bromance that they've got going on. And it looks like we're gonna get a lot more of that in this movie, which is cool. Bruce Banner is here, not really doing anything. Kinda awkward that he and Black Widow are still alive, stuck in this room together indefinitely. It's a little bit awkward. So he's looking at all of the people who have dusted, who are gone. So we've got Scott Lang, who we know is actually not dead. He's stuck in the quantum realm, but they all have assumed that he is dead because he's nowhere to be found. We also have Shuri on the screen, which is a little bit surprising because at the end of Infinity War, she did not dust, she didn't disappear. So everyone assumed that she survived. And there were a lot of theories that because T'Challa dusted, that she would rise up to the mantle of Black Panther and she would be the new Black Panther and that it was gonna be awesome. And I was very excited to see if that was a thing that would happen. But it looks like unless they're wrong, she could be off doing something on her own because she's just a genius that she could have like, created a whole other universe or something. I'm secretly hoping that she's like off in the world doing something awesome and is gonna come back and be like, oh, just kidding, I'm alive. But as far as we know right now, no idea. If she is, that's kind of upsetting that she didn't even get that like moment in the movie of like, they didn't even give her the opportunity to be dusted. She's just like, oh, she's gone. Like, that kind of sucks. And then Peter is also shown as one of the people who <laughs> has been dusted into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Then we get a nice beautiful shot of the hangar, all empty, golden hour, beautiful, kind of ghostly. Gotta get that lens flare in there, you know. And we've got a very sad looking Thor. 
looking kind of sad, but also angry, like he's ready to fucking burn a mother down. He's got that sad, broken vengeance in his eyes. In his eye, I should say. And then there's Nebula, who I'm assuming is on the ship with Tony, since they were last seen together, and that looks like the ship that Tony was on. And she's looking very sad, which is a little bit out of character for her. I think we're gonna see a lot more humanity in Nebula, and I'm very excited to see what Nebula does in this movie, because if they follow the Infinity War comic story, Nebula does some shit. <laughs> And she kills Thanos, so like, if that's a thing that happens in this movie, that would be awesome! <laughs> I'm also excited to see what her and Tony do, because they're stuck alone in space together, and they haven't really interacted up until this point. Like, they were sort of around each other in Infinity War, but they never had like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I'm really excited to see what happens between the two of them in this spaceship. And I also kind of want to see Tony like do something with Nebula because she is like mostly machine and he knows how to work with machines. Like couldn't they work together and like create something super awesome and maybe save themselves? Or maybe Pepper is going to come and save them in her super Pepper suit. Or Captain Marvel is going to come save them because we haven't really seen anything from her yet. So maybe she's going to come into the picture here. I don't know. A lot of theories, a lot of things that could have happened. But I'd, I don't know. Only time will tell. Then we have this kind of heartwarming shot of Nebula's hand on what I'm assuming is Tony's shoulder. It's still that very blue-green lit room, which I'm assuming is the ship, and Nebula and Tony are the only people on that ship, so I'm assuming that's what's happening here, which is kind of a nice little, like, I don't know, it's a very small moment, but it's a, it's a nice, kind of beautiful little moment here. And then, this is where things get exciting. So when I first saw this shot, I was like, who, who is that? It looks like the guy from Doctor Strange. Even the setting kind of looks like Doctor Strange. But then I was like, oh no, there, there's that weird, that weird samurai sword. It's some guy in a black and gold outfit. Then we see Black Widow looking very confused. And then he takes off the mask and he's like, boom, bitch, I'm Hawkeye. Which is A, very exciting because we didn't know if he made the cut, if he got dusted, if he was ever gonna come back. He's like off living on his farm with his family, which was a weird storyline that we don't really talk about much. But now, here is where the exciting theories come in. <laughs> so, first of all, he's wearing this suit that is very reminiscent of Ronin, which is a character that he becomes in the comics. I think it's in like the 2009-2008 of Marvel Comics, sometime around there, where Hawkeye died and then a few years later came back to life as superheroes do in Marvel Comics. But when he came back, someone else had taken up the mantle of Hawkeye. I forget who it was, so I'm going to Google it. Kate Bishop, who was a young Avenger. When Hawkeye died, she decided to take his name, so she became Hawkeye. So when Clint came back to life a few years later and saw this girl being Hawkeye and doing a pretty damn good job at it, he was like, well, I don't really want to take that away from her. She's doing a pretty good job. I don't want to mess things up. So instead he became Ronan. He created this other superhero identity, which was a lot darker, a lot more badass. And in this world of Infinity War in the MCU, Clint took a plea with the Sokovia Accords saying that he was not going to be a superhero anymore. He was just going to go live with his family. He was done. He was retiring. So why would he come back unless his entire family died. Isn't that just happy and wonderful? So I am looking forward to a very angry, very vengeful Clint as Ronan, just ready to fuck shit up. I mean, you can just tell by Hawkeye's facial expression that his entire family just got wiped. In this trailer, he's looking very sad and broken and mostly just angry. Like he looks like just kind of dead inside. Like he looks back at Black Widow and his expression doesn't even really change. He's just like, I have nothing left to live for. I'm gonna kill everybody. Rah! And then we're back to Steve and Black Widow, just ready to devise a plan. Just the two of them. Steve's wearing an old Avengers suit for reasons I don't really know. Also this shot of him looking at Peggy and his watch, which is a nice little reference to the first Avenger, but also, sorry, there's like a weird line on my face coming out of my window. <laughs> but also the last time he 
at least from our perspective, he opened his watch and looked at Peggy, was in the end of the first Avenger when he was going down in the plane right before he died. What if he's about to die again? That would be really upsetting and I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. I love this line right here where Black Widow was like, is this, is this plan actually gonna work, Steve? And he's like, I know it will, because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. And it's like, well, that's a pretty awesome line. Very much the Steve Rogers that we know and love. Just like, this is what I have to do. I have no other choice. It's happening. We're gonna give it a shot. Let's do this. And it's also just like, yeah, we're in the end game. I don't know what's gonna happen if this doesn't work. Nobody does. This is, this is it. And then I love this title reveal of the Avengers logo coming together. It's like, kind of like the dusting is playing in reverse and the Avengers kind of fade in and it looks kind of ghostly. It's a really cool visual, very symbolic visual. I'm also wondering if when the dead Avengers and everyone comes back to life, assuming that's a thing that happens, which it probably is, if the dust sequence is going to kind of play in reverse and they're all going to like whoo, back together, kind of like this logo here. I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of foreshadowing, I don't know. Endgame. Still not really loving Endgame. I am loving all of the memes about Doctor Strange and they're like, he saw the outcomes, he even saw the title of the movie. Because <laughs> in Infinity War he says, we're in the Endgame now. And then he dusts. Loving all the memes that are coming out of this trailer. Sad Steve Rogers crying. Doctor Strange knowing everything. Tony looking very sad. And my favorite is coming up next. Of course, this Avengers trailer is a little bit too sad. It's it's really dark, really sad. There hasn't been any jokes or anything exciting in the entire trailer, which is very weird for Marvel. So, of course, at the end of the trailer, they had to throw in a little bit of humor to tie it all back in. But it's a little bit dark humor because we get Scott, who we thought was trapped in the quantum realm, who I'm assuming found a way out and has found his way to Steve Rogers. Like I said in my trailer reaction video, I don't know if this is like present day or if when he found his way out of the quantum realm, he like plopped himself into a weird timeline. Like he went a couple years into the future because he says the last time he saw Cap was a few years ago, a few years ago at an airport, which happened in Civil War, which was technically a few years ago. It was in like 2016, I think. But I don't know, it is possible that it could be like a lot longer than that and I don't know, I just, judging by like this phrasing here and the behind the scenes photos that we've seen of like Steve in his original Captain America suit and Iron Man and all of them together with Ant-Man, which doesn't make any sense, is all leading me to believe that there's gonna be some weird time travel stuff in this movie, a lot of timey-wimey, confusing, hopping around different timelines, maybe even different alternate universes, like there is so much that could happen in this movie and I don't know, that's that's just my theory. I feel like there's gonna be some time travel in this movie. I love this ending to the trailer because it's like, everyone is just like so sad. This is so sad. Like I was watching this trailer and I wanted to cry the entire time. And then Scott just comes in, he's like, hey guys, what's up, what's going on? You know, everything's fine, it's cool, it's gonna be okay, we got this. But it's also a little bit depressing because I feel like Either he is super optimistic or at this point in the movie, he does not know what has happened because he was in the quantum realm when everything happened and he came back after it happened. So he might not know what happened. Like he doesn't, he doesn't even know about Thanos. So he's just like mindlessly walking around and being like, what's going on? Maybe I'm just gonna go talk to Cap and see what's up and everything's gonna be a-okay. And then Cap's gonna be like, hey, your entire family died. So that's a little bit depressing, but he's got the van. So he's got that going for him. Also, a lot of people have been speculating that Scott is actually a Skrull and that's not really him, but I don't know. That seems a little bit cheap to me. And I think there have been a lot of Skrull theories, but I don't think that we're gonna get any in this movie. Like, I feel like this is quite literally the end game. There are only a few players left. They're not gonna cloud it with scrolls. It's, I think it's just gonna be these characters. And I don't really think we're gonna be getting anyone new except Captain Marvel. I mean, I don't know. I think that's really Scott Lang there. I also kind of feel like this is a little bit of a big reveal. 
Like between this reveal and the Ronin reveal, those are kind of like two pretty big deals. Like obviously we all knew Scott was gonna come back somehow. Like the last time we saw him, he was stuck in the quantum realm. It would be really weird if he was still <laughs> stuck in the quantum realm during this entire movie. But I didn't need to see the reveal in the trailer. Like I could have been okay without that. And also the whole Ronin thing, I don't know. I don't know if I needed to know that. There were a lot of theories that Hawkeye was gonna come back because nobody knew where he was, but I think that would have been a really cool moment to see in the movie rather than in this trailer. So that does lead me to believe that maybe there's an even bigger reveal that's going to happen, like when Captain Marvel comes, or maybe if Pepper is alive and that's a reveal, or like something even bigger than that, which would be really cool. But I don't know, this kind of leads me to believe that there might be a much bigger reveal happening that we don't know about yet, and that's very exciting for me. <laughs> also, can I just say, why, why does Scott Lang need to be buzzed in. Like, I get it's like Avengers security is probably super secure. No one's there to like keep it secure, you know? Like, where there are there security guards? Did they all d die? Nobody's raked the leaves out of the front lawn, the gate's down, like, it doesn't look like anybody's home. And Scott is like, not only can he shrink and just sneak into the building, he also is like a con man and uh, like a, a robber. Like he robs people's homes, like he's, he professionally breaks into people's houses for a living. But I guess for comedic effect and for the reveal, he had to ask to be buzzed in. <laughs> I'm not really mad about it, I think it's a great scene, but I'm just, just like, can't you figure it out, Scott? Like, I feel like you could do that, you know? Maybe he's just being polite, I don't know. Anyways, that's it for my shot by shot trailer breakdown of the Avengers Endgame. It's also like the literal end, like, this is allegedly supposed to be where the current generation of the Avengers kind of passes off the mantle to the younger generation of the Avengers, and they are probably going to continue this quest for more money and make a lot of more movies. But I feel like this story we've been following from like Iron Man 1 over 10 years ago is finally coming to an end. Like, I don't think we're definitely not getting any more Captain America after this. Probably not getting any more Iron Man after this. All the contracts are ending. They're done. They've paid their dues. I am, like, gonna cry just thinking about it. <laughs> and it's like the end of an era. Like, this is it. This is the end game. This is the end. I feel like a lot of people are gonna die in this movie. I'm really not emotionally prepared for that. If Captain America dies, I'm gonna be a mess. If Tony dies... <sighs> Please don't kill Tony. Please don't kill Tony. Please don't kill Tony. I I will 100% just die if I have to watch Tony Stark die. I'm just trying to prepare myself mentally for the fact that I'm probably going to watch a lot of people that I love die. But anyways, oh, I forgot all about my coffee that I made. I hope you all enjoyed this trailer breakdown of the Avengers Endgame trailer. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this trailer. I know a lot of you aren't super hyped about it, but like what did you want from them? Like what more can they give you? This trailer is just not a lot of plot, not a lot of action, just a lot of emotions. And that's all it really could be. You can't, you don't want it to be like big and epic and full of explosions when like that was the last movie. This movie is just like, the fuck are they gonna do? I don't want them to give it away in the trailer. Just patience, patience. Let the emotions wash over you and just die a little on the inside, because that's what happened to me when I watched it. <laughs> if you have a lot to say, much like I do, and you want to talk about this movie, I do have a Discord chat room for all of my patrons, where we have a ton of different channels, all for every single movie that I review or TV show or just like random topical things that we want to talk about. But if you become a patron, doesn't matter what tier you are, you will be invited to my Discord chat channel forever, which is a pretty good deal. And we're in there all the time, like every day, just like shooting the shit, talking about stuff. And we're going to be talking about this movie in detail, talking about the trailer, talking about everything. So if you want to be part of that conversation, there's a link in the description to my Patreon page. You can come become a patron and join the chat room, join our little weird Discord family. It's a lot of fun. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already. Also, be sure to click the little bell icon down there so that you can get a notification when I post a new video because otherwise you might not know when I post a video. And that's sad, both for you and for me. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Steph Koza and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.